Hey everybody, I just wanted to show you how you can batch update item IDs in Webflow using Parabola instead of Integromat. And the advantage of using Parabola is it has this great tool that keeps you from hitting Webflow's rate limit. So I'm going to start by just creating a blank project in Webflow. So I have a blank, a blank project here, and then I'm going to create a, see, a new collection here. So I have something, just going to use blog posts and create this. And I'm going to add 20 items. The theory here is I would want to have more than 60 so you can see that it doesn't time out. But I'm just going to show you how to do this and and uh, it should work for you. Before I publish, I created 20 items. I'm going to add a field. I'm going to call this the item ID field. Plain text is going to save it. That's where our item ID is going to go. Okay. And I'm going to close this out and publish. All right, now that I'm published, I'm just going to come over here to the project settings. I'm going to jump into integrations tab and generate my API token and copy it. In Parabola, I'm going to create a new flow. And I'm going to come over here and search and start with Webflow, Webflow import. So I'm going to import all of my posts. So it's automatically set for me. I just need to add in my bear token. Webflow requires this accept dash version bear token so I'm going to show my updated results it's going to pull this across and say hey this is Ben's fabulous project Ben's fabulous project but the problem is it's showing me the side I'm getting the sides so what I need to do is get my collections so to list collections I need to do this webflow.com slash sites and then this is the site ID slash collections so I'm just going to take this site ID copy it Paste that in here and then type in collections. And then I'm going to show my updated results. It's going to make an API call. Okay, now you'll see I have blog post, which is really great. So I'm going to copy this. And then you'll notice to get all my collection items, which is what we want to be able to do. So if I say list collections items, get all items for a collection. It's collections slash the ID of the collection slash items. So... I'm going to come in here and change sites to collections. I'm going to change this ID, which is a site ID, to the ID of my collection that I want to get. And then I'm going to change collections to items. And then I'm going to show my updated results. Perfect. So you can see there are 20 blog posts. Okay. And it tells me that this might not be fully expanded. Try the JSON flattener, which is, I really love Parabola. They're really good about telling you things. So JSON flattener. I'm going to go ahead and grab that and then let's pull this over and connect it. Okay and then I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to select items and let's just show the updated results and I'm going to expand items into new rows. Show my updated results and then you'll see here's all of my blog post names and information. They're broken out now into rows. So now what I need to do is just take this information and dump it straight back into Webflow. So for that, I'm going to use an API export. So I'm going to connect here. And the first thing I'm going to do when I get into the settings is I'm going to change this to patch because we're only going to enter through fields that we want to update. And you'll notice um, if I do update live collection item, it gives me this address, which is the same that I had over here, collections you know, slash the uh, collection ID slash item. So I'm actually going to close this out real quick and discard the changes. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to grab this because this is the same thing I'm working with, except I need to add a couple things at the end here. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to post this in and then items. And then what I need to be able to do, I'm going to show the updated results here so I can get my information. <laughs> Um, I see my fields here, uh, items, and then I need to put in the item ID here. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to, you'll see it says in between these curly brackets, and I'm going to put in the name of the column. So I'm going to say items dot underscore ID. So that's going to get this field here dynamically. And then I'm going to do question mark live equals true which is what Webflow requires here at the end, okay? 
And now to update my JSON. So I need it to look something like this. So you're going to want to grab from inside the single quote all the way to the single quote. We're going to copy this and we're going to paste this inside the body. Now we don't want all, all of these things. What we need to update is the name. So we'll keep the name. Um, we'll keep the slug archived and draft. We don't need color so we can get rid of that. And we don't need author so we can get rid of that. We don't need post body or post summary so we can get rid of those. I'm going to keep this main image because I'm going to change it. So main image, I'm going to change it to my item. This is just how Webflow does things. ID, it'll be dash field. And then I'm going to have to pass this through. Um, pass in through my information. So what I'm going to do is for, uh, I can dynamically update these. So for the name, I can backspace this. And then I'm just going to do curly brackets. And I'm going to pass through the name of my post using the column header. So it'll be items.name. So I'm going to say items. And you see it starts populating up here. Items.name. And when I hit something where there's no other alternative, it automatically fills that for me. So slug, I'm going to do... Oop. I'm going to get rid of this here. And then do my curly brackets and do items dot slug oh items dot slug and then archive false that's fine draft false and then item id field i just want to pass in this item id dynamically so items dot id so dot underscore id so i'm going to say just like this items dot underscore ID. So now I have my address right. I've got the body for the call. And you can see now I max request per minute is 60. And the way Webflow works is we use bucketed rate limiting. So it's not a set amount per hour. It's set so that if you made exactly 60, re 60 requests, uh, you know, one request a second, 60 requests a minute, if you stayed at that pace, you're not going to hit the rate limit. Okay. So I do have to add in some things here. So I'm going to say my bearer token. And then I'm going to go back and grab that token. So it should be his right here. And then I need to add a custom header, which is going to be accept dash version. And then the value is going to be 1.0.0, which is this is what Webflow uh, requires. And if you look right over here, you'll notice uh, the documentation bearer token, authorization bearer except version 1.0.0. So now I can show the updated results. <clears throat> and I should be good. I want to make sure this is a patch though up top. I want to make sure that's patch because um, that means we don't we only have to pass the fields we want to pass through. We got the rate limit set. We're good. We're going to show the updated items. And then all you have to do here is hit publish. Once it's published, now I can hit run now. So I'm going to run now. And so it's going to grab that, flatten it, and then you'll see now it's working, updating those items. And this is going to take a minute, so just bide your time while it makes those 20 calls. Um, for you, it might be more, and you see it succeeded, and it enabled exports to 20 rows. And you can schedule this to run if you needed to, add a rule, whatever. But now, if I come back to my project, and I go into the designer, that field that I added and I never added any content to now has the item ID in it. So you can see item ID, item ID, and that's all updated. Now I could pass that through a form, use it to update collections, and I'm good to go. So that's how you batch update item IDs with Parabola. Hope this helps.